Well, it's time for English opening. And lately, actually after Michal Marin wrote his book about the English opening, and he gave like main directions for white, uh, people started to play C4 way more often. Uh, and uh, right after that, I was just looking for some interesting systems for black, and I found it. And I found it by no one else, by Serbian guy, who was the first one who played the following system ever. His name is Nikola Sedlak, uh, Serbian GM around 2600, and a good friend of mine. And he was the first one, and my surprise, who uh, came up with first uh, with the following variation. Let's get started. So it starts with c4, e5, and here they can go immediately with knight c3 or they can play c3. <clears throat> Sorry, knight c3. When they play knight c3, we go knight c6. Uh, and when they play g3, uh, we're going to cover this variation in details. And believe it or not, we we play this move bishop c5. This is the point of the line. If you're just trying to uh, look at this position from different points of view, it's like white playing against Sicilian e4, knight c3, and bishop c4. And in all those variations against Sicilians, that pawn uh, and piece formation by black is quite interesting, and uh, black always has to be uh, very careful. Same thing happens here. It's a little bit better for white because in comparison to those positions, white is up at Tempe, but this is quite interesting for playing with the black pieces. After bishop g2, <coughs> you now play another surprising move, a6. Who would say that this opening could be so uh, original and could be played like this? Why a6? Because I uh, would like to make shelter for this bishop. Once a good friend of mine played d6. And the guy played knight a4, bishop e4, a3, chased that bishop away and won the bishop pair. Uh, I'm not saying it's anything that special for white, but he doesn't have uh, pawn and structural weaknesses. They have a bishop pair. Well, we also have like a pretty solid position. Although we lost probably the major piece in our attacking mode it's this dark square bishop. That's why we have to play a6 move. Once again, it's shelter for the bishop on c5. By the way, I just want to tell you something here after knight c3, knight c6. I'm going to show you this Mihail Marian's approach with early g3. So it can happen now with g3 or it can happen c4, e5 and g3 straight away. Although, after uh, knight c3, knight c6, that's not the only approach by white. White can also play knight to f3. If knight goes with f3, you have to play knight f6, and this is four knights uh, English variation. There are so many moves here by, by white. There is a move like very popular lately e4 that scores great for white. There is d4 move, there is e3 move, there is uh, d3 move, and there is g3 move. So there are five different variations, equally dangerous for black players, but it's completely different like uh, type of position. And we're just going to focus on Marin's approach with our g3. When you play bishop c5, bishop g2, a6, and here, uh, we just have to divide this position into two different variations uh, by white. One can be a3, and that's what most of people are uh, learned about. So when they see the bishop on c5, just kill it with a move like e3, because e3 is such a nice move, because it closes the activity of that bishop, and uh, we've got a feeling that our bishop, ever since we play e3, hits the wall. So that's one point and uh, one line and one plan by white is with e3. Another plan could be uh, in most typical fashion when they play like knight f3, they threaten knight e5, d6, castles, knight g on e7, uh, d3, e3, for example, playing like this. Uh, by the way, 
uh, why do we play here knight g on e7? Because that's the plan, and uh, our plan is aimed against any a3 and d4 ideas by white. So that's why we play knight g on e7. So why? So when they play e3, we can put our bishop uh, in a very nice uh, mode here on a7. What's the point? The point is to wait and to see if white is going to go with d4. If white goes with d4, then we'll be able to pin the knight. And when we pin the knight on f3, we'll be able to play knight f5. And with the knight on f5, knight on c6, bishop on a7, and this bishop on g4, they have lots of difficulties with uh, bishop on a7 and with these pieces. Uh, after bishop e3, knight f5, I played this position many times. Turns out that we don't have any problems. So after bishop a7, they go with h3. Why h3? Because they just want to uh, prevent bishop g4 and they just want to have an easier d4 plan. So we go castles. By the way, for all those crazy guys, of course, d4 should be the move. For all those crazy guys who play g4, you just break them with f5 and you're immediately much better. After d4, e takes. E takes. By the way, if knight takes, same thing happens. You take by knight and play knight f5. Our approach here has to be based on provoking white to play d5. If he pushes d5, then our bishop on a7 starts to brave. And of course, you can win the game on the spot because many times people might forget about this kind of uh, cheap tricks. So after e takes d4, knight f5, once again, we provoke d5. And once again, I want to say that in case they play d5, you just go knight e5. You can also go knight a7, knight e7, sorry. Knight e5, d takes, knight e4, and your knight jumps into the center of the board. We can play and put the knight back to d6, challenging this knight on e4. I also like very much knight e4. It looks a little bit scarier for white, and I want to go with f5 and f4 next. So when they play after knight f5, knight to e2, we play rook e8. Uh, we have to stop analyzing this position here because... Black already has quite an interesting type of the game. I want to play h6. I don't want to play queen f6 immediately, increasing pressure on the d4 pawn because I'm afraid of bishop g5 and knight f4 not to lose the queen. So that's why we need to play h6 and then to go with the same plan, queen f6, and go after the d4 pawn. So after b3, in order to overprotect that pawn, I very much like this rookie to. Uh, exchanging uh, uh, where we actually sacrifice an exchange to win the central d4 pawn and get some sort of crazy dynamics. Uh, I analyzed queen e4, but knight d4, bishop d4, uh, if they play rook b1, you have once again that nasty trick with the knight j3, always those tricks on the diagonal. After rook e1, threatening mate. On e8, you play bishop d7, they go rook b1, you take on g3, and I would say that black has uh, very nice chances here. Definitely position could be assessed as unclear with neutral chances, but if I have to choose the side, that should be black. I analyzed queen e4, knight g3, because they can't touch uh, this knight, because we give check, play knight e5, and I once again have to say that we have uh knight and two pawns for the rook on paper that should be a more than good compensation for us although they have this powerful bishops uh, i'd say that position once again is pretty unclear so that's how you play if they play and if they go with d3 and after d6 uh, they just go with the move like knight f3 and all of a sudden, they change their major plan. By the way, this a is with the idea of playing b4. Uh, and then you just go with uh, this plan with the knight f6 to go to stop bishop g5. But in order not to uh, blunder bishop g5, knight e5 by white, you play h6. That's one plan. But don't forget, I just showed you a completely different type of plan, where I showed you the plan where when they play knight f3, d6, castles you don't know if they will go with uh, d3 or not why am i saying this i'll show you because uh, plan with d3 is the major plan by white it's one of the most characteristic type of the games 
And that's why we play knight g and e7. So for those who play this popular system with knight on f3 and e3, I insist, there are like three different systems by white. Knight on f3 and e3. There is a plan knight on f3 and pawn on d3. And finally, pawn on e3 and knight on e2. Uh, we should be most satisfied to play against the main line and it's with the pawn on e3 and knight on e2. It's going to be covered here as the main line. So uh, we always play this uh, clever waiting move bishop a7 to see if they'll push d4 or not. If they will, if they push immediately, I already explained you bishop d4 with all these uh, pins. In case of h3, you go castles, take, take and play knight f5 with a good counter chances. Why did I mention previously positions with the knight on f3 and pawn on d3? Because let's say they just to switch the order of moves to show you that we can even enter these positions if they play g3. So once they play g3, we play knight c6. Once they play bishop g2, we play bishop c5. And now uh, when they play like uh, knight f3, you play knight f6. Uh, but here committing yourself with knight e6 would be too early would be too early in comparison to the position that I showed you previously. So, how do you play that? You play knight c3, uh, g3, knight c6, uh, bishop g2, bishop c5, and when they play, for example, knight c3, you play a6. And when they play knight f3, to, for example, play knight e5, you play d6. And when they play castles, you go knight in d7. And uh, if you remember previously, I told you, here, they just go with a move like d3. Uh, but here, knight is on e7. So what's the difference? The difference is <clears throat> that after g3, knight c6, bishop g2, bishop c5, uh, knight c3, a6, uh, knight f3, d6, castles, we always go with the knight g on e7, and that line is aimed, because it's so popular last couple of years by black to play knight f6. And then even I lost to Melkumian in European Championship this year. He played e3 and uh, killed me in a very nice positional game with d4 afterwards. We don't want to face this d4. We don't want to take where they have possibility to play bishop g5. I like my knight on e7 that is going to challenge this pawn on d4 with the knight f5 and provoke them to push d5. Just because of this, we are actually talking about variations where we play with delayed possibility of that knight on f6 or on e7. Our knight always goes on e7. So after they play knight c3, don't forget, you never play d6 because of knight a4 and you'll lose that bishop. You play a6, knight f3, d6, castles and knight g on e7. Very nice uh, piece formation. Uh, it's uh, very flexible and this is how we always play there. If they play d3, it's not a big problem, it's not a big deal, then we've got a possibility to play castle and you know what, now you can play like, um, for example, f5, f4, followed by knight f5, you can play h6, bishop e6, queen d7, and this rook goes to b8 and you can break on the queen side with b5. Of course, your dark square bishop should always go back to a7 in these positions. And just because of this, uh, we easily uh, come to type of positions where uh, we conclude that actually they go with e3, but after uh, they go with e3, uh, I already showed you that in these uh, type of games, we're fine if we play bishop, oh, okay, bishop a7, and now they can't play d4 because of bishop, e takes d4, e takes d4, and bishop g4, they play h3, where we play castles, and I already explained to you that here we just uh, provoke them and undermine the spawn structure and uh, we just want to uh, force whites to play d5. I'll put it this way, once they play d5, position becomes kind of problematic for them. I already told you d5, knight e5, you threaten knight g3, they take it, you threaten knight g3, they go here and now I showed you the line with the knight e4 where you go with this pawn on f5. With this uh, well-positioned knight on d4, bishop on a7, that always has uh, such a big power in these positions. With the idea of pushing and breaking with these pawns on the king side with f5 and f4, I believe that black uh, has to be better. 
And now it's time to check the main line. The main line that is the most uh, critical variation here. And it's certainly going to be one of your uh, most favorite uh, lines for black against the English system. So after knight c3, knight c6, g3, bishop c5, bishop g2, you play a6. And they go with e3. Uh, and this move makes perfect sense. Like, you won't be able uh, to play any move like, uh, I don't know, f5 and f4 afterwards. Your bishop is going to be pretty much restricted. But believe it or not, it's far from truth. So after e3, we play t6, knight g2, and we step up with this bishop, actually step out, and we actually uh, place it on a7. Once again, this clever waiting move. Uh, it's so important to play bishop a7 here because you don't want to commit yourself with the knight. And most importantly, you don't want to commit yourself with the h7 pawn. Like, you're probably thinking, what is this guy uh, talking about? So let me just tell you what's the uh, point here. After you play bishop a7, uh, you're waiting for a short castle. Most logical move. You cannot even imagine how many games my students played against this creation and they won all the games. Unfortunately, I'm the only one who played against this line and uh, lost with the black pieces, but my position was easily winning. Uh, let's take a look at the continuations for white. Uh, practically all white moves are uh, kind of suspicious. So let's go. You play bishop a7. Uh, if they go the most logical, the most obvious, and I'd say one of the most critical variations, short castle, we go with h5. This is why I like this position so much. I go with this primitive version of the wing attack with h5 and h4. I want to open up the h file. I definitely want to bring my queen to h6 or the h file itself and to go with the mating attacks. So after h5, they have a couple of moves. Uh, they have h4, they have h3, and they have d4. Those who pretend like nothing's happening, like knight d5, we just play h4. This is my game. Uh, the guy played b4 to play b5, I played knight c7. I like this knight c7 because it kicks away the knight from d5, gives me a possibility to play c6 and to kick that knight afterwards away also. And um, I can always, when I take on d5, get a tempi move knight f6. After d4, it's a very typical uh, idea by white to play d4 and to close the activity of the bishop on a7. h takes, h takes, you take knight and they can't take by bishop because, okay, even if they take, you would just bring your queen to g5 and your queen goes on h6 or h5 uh, with a very, very nasty attacking ideas. After c takes d5, we just do the same and black is just so much better and has such a prosperous position. This whole plan, this whole plan uh, is based on h5. Let me tell you why. Because when they play castle short and we play h5, there is no knight on f3. And just like, you know, in many uh, e4 type of positions, when white goes with h4 and h5, it usually happens when the knight is not on f6 to control that h4 square. Here, knight is not on f3 to control the h4 square. So after uh, h5, <clears throat> they usually go h4 to stop it. Uh, I played like a whole bunch of games against h4. You just have to break it with g5. I like this move. Um, normal approach would be knight f6, bishop g4, and more or less normal type of game. Uh, you threaten to take on d4, so they have to play d5. You play bring your bishop back, play castles. And then you just go and break on the queen side with b5. Uh, one might say, it's okay position, black is absolutely fine. And I believe black is really fine here. Although I don't like both pawn on h4 for white and pawn on h5 for black. That actually makes uh, this type of position. Position may be slightly more preferable uh, for black. Uh, but the problem is 
uh, both sides have mutual chances to play on a win almost in every single moment. So after h4, we play g5. And when they take on g5, we play h4. I very much like this one. I just want to tell you that you can always take by queen. And after knight d5, what normally everybody does against me, don't defend on d8 by queen d8 because your queen needs to be there on the king's side to uh, support attack. Just go with the king on f8. And you don't care about the pawn on c7. Your attack will be like very... Uh, straightforward on the king side with h4 and you use you just use the power of these four pieces and never forget uh, like a hidden bishop on a7 that has such a nice uh, position there and some very nasty and uh, tricky uh, things in many of these uh, games so after like h takes g5 you can take on g5 by queen but i like h4 and after d4, because it's the only way to uh, kind of close this uh, bishop on a7 and to make it uh, closed. You take on g5, knight d5, and king f8. This king always goes on f8. You never care about the pawn on c7, uh, because if they take, you play rook b8. Who cares about the pawn if it gives you like a very, very uh, prosperous attacking chances? After f4, you play queen h6. I know it looks crazy. I know it looks like uh, what kind of madness is happening right now on the board. But you just want to go with h6, g3, followed by queen h2. You just want to take on d4, followed by, or bishop g4 by threatening on d4. And black has a very, very um, uh, strong position. Uh, I would say attack. Just because of this they usually instead of h4 go with h3 h3 is uh, slightly more preferable for white i played a tournament game against uh, dubinsky in european championship uh, like six years ago i played h4 g4 and broke with f5 uh, many guys like to play uh, they have to take but many guys like to play f3 if they play f3 just play knight g on e7 flexible knights play short castle and play this type of game where you want to break on the uh, queen side with b5 although the point is the guy captured i did capture play d4 i played queen d7 and king h2 this is what literally everyone does and here uh, an interesting fact uh, during the game was that i did remember my analysis and my move during the game but an interesting uh, fact is that I didn't remember why should I play that move. And then I decided if, you know what, that's a suggestion for you. If you don't remember the analysis, but you do remember move, usually you shouldn't play it. Or if you don't understand it, better play something that you, don't, that you do understand because this, is, this should be just bad. So I played g5. Uh, sorry, I played knight f6 and I was supposed to play g5. Right after that game, I played knight f6 and I got better position. The guy immediately made mistake. Uh, I could have taken on d4 and got into winning position. Although uh, I played bishop g6, we played like this and I had nice position where uh, black had like full control of the game and I just blundered rook in a much better game. Uh, but the point is, g5 is the move. Right after that game, I learned this analysis properly and I'm not lying to you if I tell you that I won probably more than 50 games like this. They all play e4. And um, right after uh, I played that move, uh, knight f6, something crossed my mind and said, hey man, you actually played g5 so you can sack your bishop and support it with g4. Who would say you can play this crazy uh, piece sack to go with g4? And I insist on the following thing very much. A look at the point of this bishop on a7 so if they go with bishop g2 you play g3 you open up this rook you use all these pieces to attack and now your bishop becomes a monster because this diagonal becomes one of the decisive diagonals in this position they can play king h1 because of h3 and g2 they usually play d5 and very important move is to place this knight on d8 why so this queen can go on g7 when i'll show you this is my game against international master from Germany. 
played and played chess uh, back to 2014. I played g4, of course. Look at the monster on a7. Now it's open. The guy played, uh, sorry, the guy played f takes g3, h takes g3. Now check is by rook. Uh, king g3, check. And I played knight f6. The guy played bishop e3. I came up with check, check. And after knight g4, he resigned. What's the point? The point is that after knight d5, d8, bishop g2, g3, they have to go king h1. We play knight f6. We can play h3 and g2, but knight f6 is strongest computer move. I analyzed these positions many times. I play them like so many times. Also, they can't play any f takes g3. They can't play bishop f3 because of queen h3, queen h2 mate, and they, they have lots of problems with treatment of this game. Just because of this, uh, I consider this g5 a beautiful novelty and a beautiful idea. And uh, I don't think anyone ever played it uh, up to this moment. And finally, uh, if they play d4, uh, majority of players do d4. We go with h4 and uh, I'll show you uh, two games. I'll show you a game of good friend of mine, Grandmaster uh, Sholak uh, first board of Turkey and he played like this uh, he was black in the game bishop c6 b takes c6 I am always of opinion that if whoever plays like this he has to suffer because he gives up like the light squares and uh, defense of the king bishop h3 short played to on g3 and played d takes c5 so he wasn't even interested to attack this guy so he just had like a bishop here advantage wanna go with knight f6 knight g4 in the game was b4 c5 he doesn't want to give this guy to lose uh the activity of the dark square bishop in case of b5 bishop e6 <coughs> after knight e5 rook d7 played c6 and knight was trapped and Bergland uh in dubai 2015 resigned the game what an easy game on the other hand i'll show a game of mine against uh, another i am from a Germany who played knight e5 against me, I captured, played bishop g4, threatened on, to take on d4 and on e2, and after b4, e takes d5 and b5, a takes, c takes, I, you know what, I realize that he just wants to include some uh, moves like b6 to close my bishop, to take uh, on d4 w when he first takes uh, and gets rid of this bishop on a7 and knight on c6 but i included this d3 move after queen d3 knight e5 queen c2 c6 i kicked the knight away and weakened the pawn e3 and played rook c8 eventually i won the game this game was played back to 2017 on icc and uh, when we play h4 against their move d4 uh, they just have to go with the b4 move What's so special about this b4 move? They just want to play b5 and somehow get the major piece back into the game. That's the bishop on g2. But the problem is they have so uh, such a big troubles uh, in this uh, type of games that they should probably uh, take care of their king and defending the king side much more than playing this b4 and d4. Usually those guys who try to be like um, kind of like having s s some counter-attacking chances in this position, we do not allow them that because we just attack uh, straight forward. H takes and F takes. Let me just sh uh, show you what I if H takes. I also play like a whole bunch of games there and I'll show you. You just play queen g5. You now threaten queen h5 or queen h6. If they play knight d5, queen h6 to threaten mate f3 and here uh, we just play a very nice move, bishop h3. Idea is bishop takes g2, followed by queen h2, checkmate. They have to take. Idea is queen h2, mate. They have to play king f2 to start running away. And now, um, it's not just like that, that I didn't want to defend that pawn on c7. Now I defend it in the best possible way with the king on c8 when I make the long castle and put my king in a safety. The guy against me tried to play b5. I played a takes, a takes, and played knight g on e7. Nice move, because otherwise, if I just place my knight on e7, he would just go with b6 and I would be in severe troubles. I played knight g on e7, uh, and he didn't want to take, because after knight e5, 
we both agree that after the game that the king is in safety on b8 and that this king is way safer than the king on f2. Queen b3, queen e6, threatening like rook h2, uh, threatening like e takes d4, like f5, f4 to open up the bishop, and this is almost undefendable. In the game was knight dc3, I played e takes d4, b takes c3, and d takes c3, which should give black an easy time here. And just like you see, uh, that's why lots of people after h takes queen g5 play f4, but after queen h6, what's our threat? Our threat is queen h2, king f2, bishop h3, and then you take on d4, and then you just go with the attack there. So in case of king f2 on time, so they can face queen h2 with rook h1 to trap the queen, we just go knight f6. That's a nice thing, because in case they go with this, look at this nice tactics. Check. I also won like a couple of games like this. King g1. Uh, king f3 has to do that. If king g1, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hope you found it. Queen h1. Queen h1, bishop h1, rook h1, followed by knight f2 and knight takes d1. That's why I have to play king f3. You go knight h2. And just when they think that you want to repeat the moves, no, you're not going to repeat, of course. Take on d4 and play bishop f5. You can choose uh, whether you want to put your king on a queen or a king side. Attack is inevitable. And, of course, mating attack is just about to happen from black's point of view. And just because of this, people like to take a little bit more by f-pawn. But that now weakens, uh, actually strengthens our bishop and weakens king and these dark squares on the king side we play knight f6 uh, i also uh, know that we can play bishop g4 and after b5 to play knight d4 that was the game played in uh, i believe croatia by one a croatian gm he won a game like this playing black and it's nice because if they take we take by bishop take by knight and bring the bishop back into the game nice all we have to do is to drag queen somehow on the h file and to mate. Uh, I also know the game knight d4, bishop b7, and watch out here. I saw one game, uh, black played rook b8 and even lost in three moves. Uh, rook b8, knight d4, queen sack, bishop d1, check, and after this, check. And who would say all of a sudden black is just lost? I mean, it's nice, it's full of tactics, but that's why you don't, you don't have to play bishop g4, just play knight f6. Knight f6 would absolutely stop all white's uh, intentions in terms of, I don't know, just complicating the matters here. Uh, that's not possible. We want to go with bishop g4. We do not allow them to play knight e5 afterwards, and we're just fine. All things considered, variation with short castle is, con is, is considered to be bad for them because of move h5. And actually, the whole line is based on waiting for them to make castle, in which case you play h5 and you have an amazing um, action. Uh, anything else, like rook b1, you just play always bishop f5 with a tempia threatening rook, queen d7 threatening bishop h3. They have to play h3 themselves and you put your knight on e7. What's the point? I remember uh, Giri or Aranyan played like this. Then you bring your bishop back to g6 or a6 and jump with your knight on f5 or play f5 and f4 doing some sort of uh, attack. Uh, apart from rook b1, they can play the same fashion, uh, d3. But here, I'll show you a game between Giri uh, against Prasikin. Giri managed to win this game even though he was completely lost. Let me show you what happened. Prasikin played h5. Logical move, but... You usually want to have rather h5 when the short castle was played. And the guy played h3 to stop this h4 plan. Uh, black played f5. And the idea behind f5 is to play h4, in which case white wouldn't have g4. So after h4, uh, knight f6. Idea behind knight f6 is to go with the knight g4 and to break with f4, opening up this bishop on a7. What's the point? The point is, uh, in case of d4... I'll show you what happened in the game. Uh, but in case of castles, how do you 
perform attack for black. You play knight g4, and when they play d4, you break with g5, and when they take, you take by queen, and when they play knight d5, you don't have this in previously seen variations because pawn was on f7. Here, queen comes on g7, controls e5, defends c7, uh, supports uh, h4, um, goes after the king on g1 and bishop on g2, and finally, even uh, pressure is the d4 pawn. Perfect uh, for us. Giri played d4. Prasikin played castle, where he stopped his... Uh, sorry, where he completed his development. And after b3, we can once again stop. I can once again give you like one minute... Ter I don't know, take like five minutes even if you like, and try to find a move for initiative. Uh, the move is f4. So after d takes e5, uh, this is a well-known pattern and trick from the close Sicilians and Grand Prix attack uh, by white. You play f3 when the bishop takes knight e5, when they go like this, bishop g2, and you, all of a sudden you have uh, an amazing control and the game on the light squares. After bishop e7 check, this one, and threatened mate in one. After king g2, rook a b8, bishop d5, king h8, and can you believe uh, this guy, uh, Anish Giri, managed to win this position? Well, now you see how strong they are. Even th when they're completely lost, uh, they're able to come up with some proper defense or fight and to win the game. And when they're completely winning, for example, if they had this position with the black pieces, they would never uh, miss a chance and they would always win the game. That's the difference between uh, them, top uh, class world players and uh, like the others uh, okay we've seen uh, rook b1 we've seen d3 now let's take a look at d4 on d4 lots of guys do this you always take and you just challenge this uh, pawn with knight f5 uh, in, in case they take by knight you always take by knight play knight, place your knight on e7 and after this you play knight f5 knight e2 and always make sure, because you've got problems with light square bishop pawn on b7 and rook on a8, make sure to play easy rook b8 and b5. You already have nice game. This happened in game Narciso Dublan against Pradovic in European Championship 2010. And finally, if they play like e takes, you play knight a7, uh, knight a5. This is game... Um, after queen d2, he played h6 to avoid bishop g5, knight d5, and knight d5 looks uh, kind of intimidating because threatens on c7, doesn't allow our queen to move. Now, black played rook e8, before knight e7, kicking this knight away, uh, played c6 to soften the activity and importance of the bishop and g2, played bishop d7, rook c8, and then he captured an e3 and played knight f5. This is game between uh, Novikov uh, and Ivanishevich. Ivanishevich uh, won in one chill at this game in a mutual fight, just like you see, he was able to make a very nice flexible position and to one chill he take advantage of the bishop here. And uh, finally, if we uh, put aside all these previously seen variations, uh, we just have to check one more line, a3, with the idea of b4. I always say against weaker players, you can immediately go with h5, and I realized that afterwards Grishchuk, Nakamura, and others, even Aranyan, played h5. Uh, but knight g on e7 could be a classic approach, and when they play like b4, that's why, sorry, that's why they played this a3 move, you play castles. And after, like, bishop b2 to play d4 at some point, because in case of d4, you immediately have a nice position. e takes, e takes, knight f5. Bishop e3, rook e8. Queen d2, boom. Just because king is uncastled. So after bishop e2, you play bishop f5, d3, queen d7, threatening bishop h3. They, they're not supposed to allow that. And after h3, h6. What's the point of this double shelter? We've got a shelter on a7 after a6 and now we've, we're gonna have it on h7 with the bishop on f5 because we want to open a possibility for this knight to go on f5 and with this bishop to simply tackle this pawn on a3 and start making some threats 
So after h6, they go with rook c1, rook a to e8, queen d2, and knight d8. Knight d8 is a very nice move. Uh, it reminds me of all those close type of Sicilians, Ray Worst. Uh, because if they play knight d5, you would have knight c8, kicking that knight away with a tempi, and then going with the normal plan. If they go d4, you just take, take, and play this knight c6, threatening knight d4. And when they play knight here, you just go with bishop h7. I'm showing you game between Damjanovic and Predovic. And after b5, Predovic put it back and played c6 to soften this bishop. And he had a very nice game. I very much like this pressure against the d4 pawn. I like his pieces. And not many times you'll be able to see bishops like this on h7 and a7. And they're even considered to be good. And finally, instead of d4, they can also play b3. We play bishop knight g on e7, but a friend of mine, ex Serbian champion Bogosavljevic, played uh, h5. He played against Svetkovic like this and managed to win the game. Uh, after h3, we set f5 with the idea of h4. He played h4, knight f6, castles, and I just explained to him before the game that he wanted to play f4 and f3 just like Prasikin did in the game against Giri. Uh, point is, his opponent after early h5 played h4, Bogosavljevic played bishop g4 and managed to win the game afterwards in a nice game. After knight g and e7, which is way more flexible, bishop b2, bishop f5, this bishop f5 threatens queen d7, bishop h3, threatens knight b4. In some lines, even uh, when castle is played, bishop d3 with pretty much... Um, stuck a white pieces into the center of the board after like d3 queen d7 you can't play castles because of bishop h3 you we already learned that and after h3 we just go rook b8 we also learned this plan uh queen side action by black coped with b5 so after queen d2 castles f4 and bishop g6 this is novelty and i believe strong one we need to open possibilities for knight f5 and f5 but also we got a threatened very nasty knight before here. So after knight e5, knight e5, knight e7, g4 and f6. I've seen this idea from the game Damjanovic Predovic where Predovic played this bishop g6 goes back to uh, f7 and goes uh, after the pawn on d5. After d4, rook e8, d takes, d takes, f takes, f takes. Bishop e5 wouldn't work because knight f5 uh, after P sec, now this is like, after, sorry, pawn sec, now this is P sec, double P sec, and rook f5. And black is simply collapsing. Well, uh, I was trying to be very productive this lecture. I was trying to move very fast because uh, there are like a really big number of games that you got to check and you got to make sure to understand if you want to play this variation. Also, I tried to show you the ideas so you can easily cope with afterwards when you play your games, not just to remember these lines by heart. Have a good one and enjoy.